الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In our previous reflection we were speaking about the things that will increase the iman and the things that will reduce the iman and we mention the thing that will increase the iman the first thing that we mention is al ilm nafi beneficial knowledge beneficial knowledge is the first and the foremost thing that will increase a person's iman if you want your iman to increase you should nurture yourself with beneficial knowledge and we said the beneficial knowledge that we're talking about is knowing Allah knowing his names knowing his attributes that will increase your iman so we spoke about that and today inshallah ta'ala we're going to speak about the second type of beneficial knowledge that will increase your iman and that is knowing the Quran the book of Allah if a person learns the Quran in terms of its wording the huruf of the Quran the wording of the Quran the person gives importance to that and also the person gives importance to the meaning of the Quran and what the Quran is saying to him and instructing him this will increase a person's Iman because Allah Ta'ala he said this Quran for a purpose there's an aim why this Quran came down the Quran wasn't sent down merely and only for the people to read it that is a purpose yes but it's not the only purpose Rather, the ultimate reason of the Qur'an is to ponder over it. Allah says in the Qur'an, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ Allah says, a book that's blessed, so you may ponder and contemplate in it. In other words, analyze the meaning that are in it, the gems that the Qur'an contains. The person pays. وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Also, Allah says in another ayah, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder over the Qur'an or are there locks on their hearts? أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا الْقَوْلَ Have they not pondered on the speech? Many verses in the Qur'an, you tend to find that Allah keeps mentioning this concept of what? Pondering over the Qur'an. Allah even says, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ if a disbeliever asks for your shelter, Allah says, give it to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until he hears the speech of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Qur'an is being given that importance. And if a people read the Qur'an and they understand its meaning, it's one of the things that increases your iman. And one of the things I benefited from Shaykh Al-Allama, Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti, rahimahullah, in his kitab, Daf'u Iham, Al-Iddirab. This is one of the unique characteristics of the Qur'an is that the Qur'an, the meaning that are in it, there are direct statements in the Qur'an, which is called mantuq. Mantuq means what? Mantuq is what you directly take from the Qur'an. And the second one is mafhum. Mafhum is what? The mafhum is the understanding that is taken from the Qur'an. An understanding. It's not what the Qur'an is directly saying, it, saying to you, but it's, an, it's a mafhum that you're taking from the Qur'an. I'll give you an example. وَبِلْ مِثَالِ يَتَضْحُ الْمَقَالِ With an example, it'll become clear to you. If I say to you, Akhi, stand up. Stand up is a mantuq, it's a direct statement. It's a what? It's a direct statement. But what is it that you understand from it? It means don't sit down. Don't sit down is a mafhum. Does that make sense? Stand up is a mantuq. Huh? I could come and say to you, I accept my mantuq, I accept what I said to you, stand up. I did say that, and that's what I meant. But I didn't intend the mafhum. I only meant don't lie down. You can say that if you want, but you can't lie down. Does that make sense? I can reject the mafhum that you've brought out. And I can say I don't accept it. Does that make sense, brothers? And a lot of the times people are accounted and they're accused of things based on mafum. Does that make sense? And the person says, no, I didn't mean it like that. The Qur'an, the mantuq and the mafum, both of them don't contradict. 
The only speech that don't contradict itself in its mantok nor is it in its mafum. Other time we might say something, and but what we mean by it, it might be different to what it's saying. The only word, the only book that its mantok and mafum don't contradict is what? It's the Quran. <coughs> the ulama, they honored the Quran and venerate. So pondering over the Quran like that and analyzing it, it increases your iman. And it allows you to admire the Quran and what the message that is passing over to you. And one of the greatest books in the Quran, it's small, it's easy. For a student of knowledge to always look at is the tafsir of Abdurrahman Nasr al-Sirdi, rahimahullah. Abdurrahman Nasr al-Sirdi is tafsir, it's one volume. If a person reads the Quran, a juz or two juz a day, and he just quick, quickly looks at what Abdurrahman Nasr al-Sirdi, rahimahullah, said, this will include this will allow the person to understand the book of Allah. And the Shaykh's Ibarat, the usage of his wordings are very simple and easy. So Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, وَإِذَا مَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ When a verse of the Quran is sent down, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ From amongst them are those who say, أَيُّكُمْ زَادَتُ هَذِهِ إِمَانًا Which of those you has this increased iman on? When a verse of the Quran comes down and ayat of the Quran are being sent, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Some of them would say, which of you this has this increased iman in? فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who believe in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala فَزَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا The ones who believe in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala who have faith of Allah and have iman, it has increased them in the iman. The Quran increases them in iman. وَهُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ Whilst they are in a state of glad tidings. They are happy. And enjoying themselves. So the Quran, pondering over it, it, what does it do? It increases a person's iman. Ridhalik the Prophet ﷺ told us, he said, Inna Allah yarfa'u bihada al-Quran. Allah raises a people through this book. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa yadda'u bihi akhareen. And another group of people, Allah puts them down. There's a person who is nothing, but they became something because of the Quran. Allah raises a person, subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the Quran and another people Allah puts them down subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah raises you in status he also raises you in reward and position the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said wal Quran the book of Allah is hujjatul laka aw alayk it's either a proof for you or it's against you when is the Quran a proof for you if you ponder over its meaning you live by what it's telling you it's going to be proof for you. Or, or, alayka, or it's going to be a proof against you. How many people are reading? May Allah's curse be upon the transgressors and the wrongdoers. And that verse doesn't, it does not speak to or is not t- talking about anyone other than him. The one who's reading it. So the Quran, it requires living by it as well. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, إذا سمعت الله يقول If you hear Allah say سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا Wherever you find Allah say in the Quran Oh those of you who believe Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he said فأرعها سمعك Bring your ear close If you hear Allah say in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he said Bring your ear close Try to listen to what's been said to you Because every time you hear يا أيها الذين آمنوا Generally you see that Allah is either telling you فإنه خير It's either a good which you're going to be commanded, or it's an evil, which you're going to be told to stay away from. So your master Allah is speaking to you. If today you were waiting for a job, and they were sent, you were waiting for the responses for them to send to you, and that email came, I promise you, look at the people the way they are with the Instagram replies that they're waiting for, and the Twitter, and the Facebook comments, the response quickly, they are, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, WhatsApp, everything. This message has come to you from your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what do you are? What are you doing? You're, you're heedless when Allah is saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Qatada rahimahullah, Qatada ibn Da'ama, al-Sadusi rahimahullah, he said, Lam yujalis hadha al-Qur'an. Qatada said, he's a tabi'i al-jaleel. He said, nobody sits with this Qur'an. Ahadan, no individual, illa qama anhu bi ziyadatin, except that he will stand up and leave this Qur'an with something increased in his life. If you sit with this Quran, and this sitting, the Sahabas are talking about living by it. No one does that except they leave with ziyadah. When you came, 
And when you leave, it's not going to be the same, inshallah. You're left with ziyada. <coughs> or you're going to leave with deficiency. You're going to leave with deficiency. And where, where, is, it, where is the increasing and the deficiency? Is if the person reads it, he ponders over it, and he actually takes it into consideration. He's increased him. Another person, he's only established a proof against him, himself. <coughs> so these are the things that increase the iman of a person. Also what increases a person's iman, brothers, is ta'ammul, observing mahasin al islami. Sitting down and pondering over the great things Islam has brought for you. One of the things that increase your iman is looking at the excellency and the great things that Islam has as a religion. And this is, brothers, in terms of aqidah, the thing that we believe. You see a group of people today, they believe and they worship a cow. That's their aqidah, that's their belief. So they're driving, the cow blocks the road, he parks his car and he doesn't move it. That's it. Does God sit in front of him? He showers and he baths with the urine of the cow. And the milk, a cow, ya ikhwa, a cow. This is aqidah, this is belief. When you look at that and when you look at Allah has given you subhanahu wa ta'ala, you realize what you've been blessed with. I remember many years back, when I was in college days, I used to go to Westminster Kingsway's College. And we, they, it was a business course I was doing. So we went to the Coca-Cola, and subhanAllah, the, the Coca-Cola company is somewhere here in Edmonton. Eh? It's in Edmonton, right? Subhanallah, it's true. So yeah, see, somewhere here. So they brought us. So we went to the department of the guy who's the, high, the head of the hygiene section. Wallahi, I remember. So what me and him, he was meant to give us a little presentation. So we went to the, we went together. I went to the toilet. He went to the toilet. We, subhanallah, we both came at the same time again. I went and I washed my hands. That's the head of the hygiene department in Coca-Cola. Now he walked out without washing his hands. Now this is something you ponder because it's not something you brought to yourself. It's not your hard work and your effort. Huh? This is mahasil in Islam. This is what? It's mahasil in Islam. It's from the excellency and the great things Islam has brought. And the religion of Islam taught you. You see people are rich. They've got so much money. Hygiene is extremely low. From the blessings of Allah that He's given you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ A Yahudi man came to mock the companions. He came to mock some of the companions. So he said to them, قَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَمَا قَدْ عَلَّمَكُمْ نَبِيُّكُمْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ He said, your prophet, he came and he taught you guys everything. حَتَّى الْخِرَاءَةَ Your messenger came and he taught you khira'ah. And the khira'ah is... When a person wants to do his call of nature, and that's what he's out there to do, your prophet told you what to do in the toilet as well. He was mocking, and the Sahabas didn't find that as a. They find that very good that he taught them that. They they actually were proud of that, and Salman al farisi said, "Naam, bala." Of course, he taught us that. Our prophet taught us all of that, and then he started to say what he taught him. He said, "Laqad ha, laqad lahana." Our prophet prohibited us, and nastaqbil al qibla that we don't face the qibla. لغائطن, whether we're doing urine or whether we are doing, uh, doing our number one or two uh, أو أن نستحي, أو أن نستنجي باليمين, or that we use our right hand he prohibited us from it or, and he also prohibited us from what أن نستنجي بأقل من ثلاثة أحجار, that we use less than three stones he prohibited us from it he also prohibited us from what أن نستنجي برجيح أو عظم he prohibited us from using a animal thesis and he also prohibited us from using bones all of that he prohibit, prohibited us from it this is the sahabas amazed with what they were taught islam brothers wallahi salihatun li kulli zamani wa makan it's the one religion every situation that you're going through it has an answer for you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something for you in this particular situation that you're going in in that you can find a answer for 
So the Sahabas, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu, they, know, they knew their religion. And they enjoyed the beauty and the excellence. Today, if you ponder, brothers, in the Islamic finance, if somebody sits down today, there's so many different angles that you can look at Mahasin of Islam, the excellency of Islam. If somebody just sits down today and ponders over Islamic finance and look at the, look, looks at capitalism today and compares the two, then we'll see a big difference between the two. The excellence that Islam has come and how Islam has can, its ultimate goal is to bring about masalih benefits from the people, for the people and also push away from them harm. You'll see that. If you look at the, the religion in terms of its ibadat and the worship, it makes sense. Excellent. Look at Nabi Allah Muhammad, the best man who walked on this earth. He came and he said to the companions, in the Abi, my father and my mother, your father, are both in the hellfire. The principle is not, for me, my parents are different, uh, and your parents are different. Now, if there's disbelievers, they're disbelievers. He said to the uh, companions, to Rabbi and Azura Qabra Ummi. I asked Allah permission if I can go and visit the grave of who? My mother. Fa'adinali, Allah permitted it for me. This shows you that the Prophet ﷺ is showing his companions, educating his companions, nurturing them upon what? That he's nurturing them upon you're all, you're all connected to Allah. I'm just here to convey a message on his behalf. Khalas. It makes sense. There's no agenda that he has, alayhi salatu salam, that he wants something from you. Are you with me? It's the only thing that makes sense. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. So this, I would suggest you read a, a muhadara that's now been made into a lecture. Sorry, sorry, been made into a book. It's called Mahasin al-Islam, written by Al-Allama Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, rahimahullah. Al-Allama Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, sahib wa adwa al-bayan, the author of the kitab adwa al-bayan, he wrote a book talking about and illustrating the excellency of Islam and that how this religion befits every time and place. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Also, one of the things that increased the Iman brothers is that ta'amul sirat al-Nabi. Jazakallahu khairan. Ta'amul, looking at, observing, reading the biography of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you look at the Prophet's biography, it will increase your Iman. It will what? It will increase your iman. And not just looking at that, looking at his etiquette and the way he carried himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the way he was as a person, the way the Prophet wasalam, moved, the way the Prophet wasalam, was, was in his appearance, his clothing. Sahabas, it was one of the things that what? It was the things that increased the iman. And if you look at the companions, how they were to the Prophet will amaze you. They even transmitted for us. This is no other religion has this except us. That Nabiullah Muhammad has been described <coughs> to details. The Sahabas even counted how many hairs he had on his forehead. Uh, sorry, on his chest. How many hair he had on his chest. They counted it and they bought it. Tirmidhi gathered a kitab called Al-Shama'il al That when the Prophet ﷺ would address a person the way his body would be. Never did the Prophet ﷺ ever speak to a person over his shoulder like this. He never. If he was speaking to somebody, he would all he would turn around fully and look at the person face to face, with his shoulders and everything facing the person. The Prophet ﷺ, if he was shocked with something, he would always turn his hand over his hands like that. Tirmidhi brings everything for you. When you leave the, when you read the life of this individual, Nabi Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam, it will increase your iman. It will increase you, it will increase your iman and what you take from his life. Alayhi salatu salam. Because he was one who Allah praised him. What did Allah say? Wa innaka, you O Muhammad, wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. <coughs> Muhammad, you are upon great etiquette. Your etiquette is of great station. This is from who Allah Tabarak wa Taala saying this about him. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Also, Allah Tabarak wa Taala told us, "Laqad kana lakum fi Rasulillahi uswatun hasana." Allah is telling us this. That in the Prophet ﷺ is a great example. For him, is a great example. If you want to take somebody as a role model, it's him. Are you a father? He's a good role model for you. Are you a son? He's a good role model for you. Are you a leader of a people? He's a great role model for you. He's a great role model for your husband. He's a great role model for you, Anything that you're looking for, 
He salawatullah wa salamu alayhi is what? He's a great role model for you. Alayhi salatu, alayhi salatu salam. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he told us in the Quran, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا Anything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gives to you, take from him. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا And anything that he prohibits you from, stay away from. Whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gives to you, take from him. And whatever he prohibits from you, alayhi salatu salam, stay away from it. So the Prophet's biography and reading who he was, it's one of the things that increases a person's iman. Many people, don't value what the Prophet says because they don't know who he is. They've not studied him. They don't have an understanding of who this individual was والسلام, and what he's put and exerted towards this religion. So reading his biography, it will increase your iman. عنها, our mother Aisha, when she was asked about the Prophet وسلم, how was he like? And she said, the Prophet's etiquette was the Quran. So he wasn't one who preached and opposed what he said. Alayhi salatu wasalam. He was one who lived by the Quran which he was reading on his companions. So a person should give importance to, to him and his life and reading his biography. I would suggest a person start with the kitab al urjuzatul Mi'iya fi dhikri hali ashraf al bariya written by uh, Ibn Abi Al-Izz Al-Hanafi Rahimahullah That kitab Al-Urjuzatul Mi'iyya Fi Dhikri Hali Ashraf Al-Bariya Ibn Abi Al-Izz Al-Hanafi Is the Sharih of Aqidat Al-Tahawiyya He wrote a book on the Prophet's biography That the person Doesn't just try to what? He doesn't just try to uh, Read the Prophet's biography But they try to memorize it And this book is a poetry form so try to read up kitab. Also what increases the person's iman is dirasa, studying siratul sahaba, the biography of the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and the tarikh and the history of these individuals, these men, sit over the life of Abu Bakr. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, ma bin ahad, there's not a person who has any rights on me. The Prophet said this, Except I've repaid him back. The Prophet is saying this. There's not a person who had rights on me except I've given him his rights. Illa Abu Bakr. Except Abu Bakr, فَتَرَكْتُ مُكَافَأَتَهُ لِلَّهِ I left Allah to repay him back. Abu Bakr. Every other person writes, I gave it back to you. Or even more. As for Abu Bakr, رضي الله تعالى عنه, everything that he's done for me, I have left it with Allah wa ta'ala to repay uh, him back. You sit down and you look at this life of why he earned that. لو كنت متخذ من أهل الأرض خليلا If I was to take a khalil, a close friend on this earth, I would have taken who? I would have taken Abu Bakr. How did Abu Bakr attain that? And what gave him the right from all of the other companions to re- really receive that? So what is it that Abu Bakr did? And what is it that Abu Bakr actually worked towards that allowed him to be like that. رضي الله تعالى عنه. ولذلك the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لو أنفق أحدكم مثل أحد ذهبا If one of us came today and we gave gold in charity is there anything more valuable than gold? Almost one of the most valuable things in You went and you gave gold today and when you gave out gold a sadaqa the Sahabas they came and they gave out just a handful of barley and wheat. Just as much. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَا بَلَغَ مُدْ أَحَدِهِمْ وَلَا نَصِيفَةِ You will not reach that hand of barley or wheat in which the companions went and gave. You gave the mountain of Uhud of gold. Why? Why is this much of their barley or wheat uh, better than our mountain of Uhud? of gold that we have given. وَلِذَلِكَ A group of people whose sickness has been placed in their hearts have shown, shown hate towards these noble companions. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was told, a group of people are out there insulting. They are insulting the Sahabas. And they are slandering the companions. And Aisha said, radiallahu ta'ala anha, subhanallah, exalted is Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Umiru, they were commanded. أَيَسْتَغْفِرُوا لَهُمْ 
they were commanded to ask forgiveness for the companions. فَسَبُّوهُمْ They insulted them. قال الله تعالى she said Allah said in the Quran والذين جاءوا من بعدهم and those who came after them يقولون they say ربنا اغفر لنا أو our Lord forgive us ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان and forgive our brothers who have preceded us in what in faith and in belief ولا تجعل and do not make في قلوبنا in our hearts غلا للذين آمنوا don't place in our hearts rage and hate towards the what the believers so Allah commanded us to what to ask forgiveness for them and what did some group of people do they took the opposite they took the opposite way ولذلك الإمام أبو قاسم التيمي رحمه الله in his kitab الحجة في بيان المحجة أبو قاسم التيمي رحمه الله is a kitab called الحجة في بيان المحجة they came up to him they came up to Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها our mother Aisha and they said Aisha there are a group of people who say that you're not their mother and she said they're right I am not their mother, I am the mother of the believers. I am the mother of who? It's true, I'm not their mothers. The person who I'm a mother for is the believers. I'm Ummil Mu'mineen. These are not believers. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. And that's correct, she got it right. And it's amazing how Allah ta'ala, what is the jaza, the rewarding of a person who slanders a believing woman? What's her reward? What's their reward? In the Islamic uh, uh, fiqh ruling, that they get, they get lashed. Allah Tabaraka Taala jara ala yadihim. Allah Tabaraka Taala made it occur on their own hands for them to lash themselves for what they have accused our mother Aisha for. Allah made it a uqubah min. Allah made it a uqubah, a punishment from their own hands for what they've said about who our mother Aisha radiAllahu Taala anha. What also increases the iman is a ta'amul fi malakuti samawat wal ard. That the person, what also increases the iman is looking at the universal signs. In the khalqi samawati wal ard, wa akhtilafi al layli wal nahar, la ayat. Like in the ayat in the ulil al bab. In the universe, the stars, the sun, the moon, all of these are signs. But they are signs for who, like in the ayat in the ulil al bab. الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. That these ulul albab, the wise individuals are the one who look at the stars, they look at the moon, they look at the sun, they look at the day, they look at the night, and all of these they say ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا. والله أو الله, you didn't create this falsely, no aim behind it. There's a purpose in why you created all of this. And the more that a person today ponders on what? The more that the person ponders over what? He ponders and he analyzes and he really thinks about the universal signs, the more he increases his iman. There's an ayah in the Quran, Allah says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah says, we will show them our signs. That are in the universe, the galaxy and everything, we'll show them our signs. وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ And even in, within themselves, we will show our signs to them. Or we will show them signs within themselves. Ibn al-Qayyim here, he brought a lefta, latifa, a beautiful point here, which is what? And this is very powerful. Wallahi, he deserves to be written in ink of gold. He mentions two individuals met one another. And one said to the other, if only Allah came and he wrote on the sky, and he part carved on the sky, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he exists. So the other one that was listening, he said, if Allah wrote on the sky that he exists, it would have made everyone believe. The other man said, that, very good idea. But what language would you want Allah to write it in? Even in English. There are people whose language is up there, mashallah. They speak eloquent and they're up there. And there's people who eat all English. Huh? So which, which English do you want? Huh? What language, what, what level do you want? And how the people's maratib are different? And then the other one said to him, Allah has written it in a language in everyone for them to know Allah Taala In a language they understand. And he said that this is the fitrah. The fitrah is a language that everybody understands. Allah has placed that in you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he brought the ayah, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ 
the fitrah is the strongest evidence to show that Allah's existence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fitrah is the strongest evidence to show that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala exists. Then everything you look at is an ayah. Allah says in another ayah, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ In you, there's a sign. Do you not ponder? Don't you analyze? Don't you look at how you are as a person? Allah, look at a dead person today who died. Look at them. They've got every part of their body still there. But why is it that they can't move? Science has reached everything. They can't still tell you the definition. Till today, no one can define what nafs is. What's the nafs? What's the soul? It's a soul class. What's define it? What is it made out of? What is it like? Does it take the huh? Does it when it goes to the person? Does it make the make the person heavy? Does it become light to person? What is it? Sah? Are we together, brothers? What's the definition? So Allah Taala says, "Wafi anfusikum in your nafs." There's a sign. Why don't you look at it? All of these are alamat and signs that will increase your iman. The more you look at, the more. Look at the sky today. Everything in the world, we naturally know it in what way? What do we know? Everything has to have a pillar that holds it. There's nothing that stands except there's a pillar holding it. But Allah Taala tells us the sky. What did He say? Bi'ayri amadil. There's a pillar holding it, but you can't see it. You never see the plane that you're on moving away from pillars. And no, but the sky is still standing there. It's holding. It. It's held. Who's holding it? And then look at that. Allah Taala. All of His slaves are asking Him at the same time. Everyone's doing something. He's aware of everyone. Not two. If a person, two people talk to you today, and they ask you something, you say, "Ah, wait, wait, wait. I've only got. I cannot listen to one person." You say that. Allah is Subhanahu wa Taala. If all of us today we stand up, all of us on this time, this minute, in the universe, all of us lift our hands up and we ask Allah in all the different languages that we speak. Wallahi la taqtalifu fihi al-lughat. Language is what makes up for him. And he knows each person what he's saying. And this is this is quwa that none of us can ever attain or receive. So this increases your what? What also increases you, your iman, brothers, is that if somebody wrongs you today, what do you feel? You retaliation. But when you look at how Allah Taala's disrespect, the way somebody is talking, arrogant, a question his existence, attributing to him what? A child that he, all of that. And he's still, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's giving him life to live. He's letting him breathe the oxygen that he created, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's allowing him to walk on this earth. He's doing all of that. <coughs> that just makes you realize that Allah wa ta'ala is truly more merciful to his creation than a mother to a child. Imagine, every time you did a mistake, <coughs> if Allah was to grab every big person, was to seize them, every time they did a mistake, ma taraka ala dhariha, no one would be left on this earth. صح? A lot of the times, the reason why we can't do something to somebody is consequences that we fear and the lack of ability that we have. صح? He has all of that. He doesn't have to answer to anybody. He can destroy anyone who he wishes. But he chooses for them to live on and he allows them to receive what he has given them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will increase your iman and truly admire Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Also, what increases the iman, brothers, is al-amal al-saliha, righteous actions. Righteous actions, as you all know, iman is a component of three things: al-iman al wa amal wa atiqad. Iman is what? Speech. Iman is action, and iman is belief. Without action, there is no iman. So, a person needs to have what? Actions. The actions that you need have to be what? Righteous. And what is a righteous action? It's an action that's done with sincerity. It's really done for Allah's sake and it's also done in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Iman increases through righteous actions and it decreases when the person leaves off righteous actions. You all know the famous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hadith Abu Hurairah fi Sahihain, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man qala la ilaha illallah wahadahu la sharika la, lawul mulk wa lawul hamd wa wa ala kulli shayin qadir. Mi'ata marrah. A person says that a hundred times. La ilaha illallah wahadahu la sharika la. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if that person will gain a hundred rewards, Allah will give you a hundred rewards. Righteous action. What else? A hundred sins will be taken away from you. Not only that. And that person who said those words is the best person that day 
And there's nobody who has come with something greater than you than that day, that day. Except a person who's added on to that. Who said that with you and he did something else. Just by saying that a hundred times, the Prophet clearly and categorically said, no one is better than you that day what you've achieved. Just by saying what? La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk, wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayka A hundred times a day. <coughs> and the more you say, the better. This will give you, brothers, what? A hundred rewards. Get rid of what? A hundred sins. Also what? There's nobody better than what you have come with that day. And that's not only it. There's many other things a person can do. Righteous deeds that a person can come with. All of which will increase his iman. If you do something good, it will increase your iman. I know every one of you here who's done good will know the iman, how it increases your heart. وَلِذَلِكَ السَّلَفْ وَهَذِ الْأُمَّةِ this is what they used to consistently do, the pious predecessors. They always used to try, try to come with righteous actions so that Iman increases. Last but not least, inshaAllah ta'ala for today's session is what increases the Iman is Sima'ul Khayri. Listen to the good and going to the majalis with dhikr, the places where Allah wa ta'ala is being remembered. <coughs> going to circles of knowledge, it will increase your Iman. If you go to a place where you're learning, you're studying, or you're even going heart softening sessions, these are things that will increase your iman. It will allow your iman to increase. You all know the famous hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, in where he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, a man is not with the crowd, he's just walking by. A group of people are sitting somewhere, and he's coming and he's walking through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, forgive everybody in that gathering. The angels come back to Allah, they say, Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, my, your slave, so and so, he is not part of that program. He's not part of that halaqa. He was just going by that day and he just sat down. Allah wa ta'ala says to the angels, even so and so, he's forgiven. Why? Because he has now come in what gathering? He's come to the gathering of righteous people. And this type of gathering, la yashqi jalisum, the one who sits with them will not lose out. The one who will not lose that. Brothers, I ask you guys a question. Allah tells us in the Quran, the, to- the story of the what? Allah tells us in the Quran, the people of Kaf, right? He tells us the story of who? The people of Kaf. The, pe- the, children, the, boy- the boys of the cave, right? He went to the cave. These young boys, who was with them? They had a little dog. How do we, huh? They had a dog, right? Huh? They had a dog. Does the Quran state that dog? Does it mention that dog? Did it state the dog? What did Allah say? The eighth one was the. Why did Allah mention the dog for? Allah just mentioned the seven boys that were there and not the dog. Because the dog was with righteous people, he was in a gathering of righteous individuals. And because he's with righteous people, he's given that reputation, he's mentioned. And he deserves to be mentioned and being told. So if you go to majalis, gatherings of righteous people, and you're in a place where righteous people are there, <coughs> are we all together? This gives you what? It gives you the right to be known, right to be mentioned. That's a dog. Imagine a human being who's in the right gathering with the right people. Sah, brothers. If you look at today, there's two types of dogs. A trained dog and a what? Are they the same price? Huh? Two Both of them are from the same One is a German Shepherd The other is a German Shepherd But one is trained German Shepherd And the other one is not a trained German Shepherd Are they the same price? Why? Ilm Knowledge It's a dog It's a dog And a dog Same breed The same breed One is You're going to have to You have to You're going to have to Put your hand deep into your pocket. And the other one, uh, take it. Please take it. Sah? The reason is because this one knows. Hatta in the Quran, the dog that's trained, if it hunts for you and it kills the animal, and you said, Bismillah, that animal is eaten. The one that's not trained, if it goes and it kills the animal, it's haram for you to eat it. Why? Ilm. Even within the dogs, there's what? Allah raised the dog that knows from the dog that doesn't, that doesn't know. 
Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaitan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa bihamdi. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfirullah wa atuhu ilayhi.